thanks. Yeah, so I'm here today um, talking about work I did with Dylan Harpin um, at the University of Chicago. Um, I work at the University of Chicago at the Spatial Data Science Center and with the Healthy Regions and Policy Lab. Um, we are a group that is interested in how place drives and tracks with and influences health for different people in different ways. And to explore this, we use neighborhoods, complex systems, and social, uh, 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 sorry, social economic sort of geospatial uh, modeling to, to do all that. Um, we tend to produce a lot of um, dashboard and applications for our partners who tend to be academics, advocates, and community members who are all trying to make an impact on things like the opioid crisis in the state and um, the COVID response that we've had there. Um, we often build these out in a way that's very cheap and very kind of easy to run, um, simply because we need to provide our partners something that's maintainable, extensible, and is not going to cost them long term. So we do a lot of in-browser analytics and do a lot of in-browser processing for things. But that comes as the problem. Um, we have a team of people only who have, only who have, like, two of us are developers, and so we only have so much bandwidth to update and maintain the applications that we build. And so really kind of what we're focusing on in this talk and Mathematical is building out tools that allow people to maintain and take ownership over applications like this themselves. Matico is a tool that we're building out. Um, it's a couple of different tools, actually. The one I'm going to talk about the most today is the App Creator. Um, this is a tool that's focused on building out entire geospatial web applications. So in multiple pages, multiple interactions, multiple panes, all without using any code, and all in such a way that anybody can update and maintain them. It kind of looks a little bit like Photoshop here, because we're using Adobe's um, like, like styling library for it. Um, but it basically allows you to generate very complex applications that can be used for these kind of purposes without any code and with people who are not technically being able to maintain them. Um, we start by being able to import data from any source on the internet. So if you can point to a GeoJSON file, a CSV file, a GeoParquet file, pretty much anything, we can pull that in and use it in the application on the browser side. Um, we also have connectors for things like Socrata, so you can bring in data sets that are publicly um, oriented to, to, to begin with. We have a system as well where you can upload data sets to the system, and it will convert them into a highly efficient GeoParquet format for use in the browser. Um, all these data sets get pulled into the browser at runtime and um, stored as GeoArrow and used in a very sort of, uh, efficient way of uh, manipulating those data sets and visualizing them. Once we have them in the, data, the browser, we can actually do some manipulations on them. Data is rarely in the format you want it to be in to use. And so what we can do is we can aggregate, filter, join, and do more complex compute with, um, using a WebAssembly um, to actually produce really rich interactions with the data sets in the browser. Um, this means it's way more flexible, and you're not just like stuck with the data sources you get and the data formats you get. Um, I'll be talking a little bit more about WebAssembly at 445 over in um, the building over there, which the names I forget. Um, so if you want to hear more about that, come over there. Once your data is in shape and you've joined all your data sets, we can actually build out very complex views um, using a system that mirrors um, Flexbox and CSS Grid, all by kind of dragging and dropping these panes. So we can create panes that have maps, charts, um, histograms, and text, all of which are inline editable. So if I want to edit the text in here, I don't need to be a developer. I just come in, double click on the text, and I've got a rich text editor to change the material there. If I want to change the color of the points in the graph, I just switch them up in the interface, and similarly with mapping. We have really rich styling options for data-driven cartography um, and for manually editing uh, the sort of color of the charts, et cetera, just basically doing data-driven colorization. Um, and then once all this is done, you hit a single button, and you have a, a static web application that you can deploy to basically anywhere you can deploy a static web application and run basically cost-free um, for, for all time. And again, if somebody needs to do updates in that, web, that, that application or website, they can go there and do it themselves. They don't need to involve us. So it's a highly flexible um, thing that you can also then fork and modify. So if you, somebody's made an application you like and you just want to add in a data set, you hit one button, you fork that application, and you add it in yourself using the editor. For people who do need to use um, and manage data sets a little bit more carefully, we have built out a data server um, called Medical Data Server, which is Postgres backed, but we're expanding to other backends that allow people to upload any data set and then kind of manage it as a community. So this would be great for community web mapping projects, et cetera. Um, that's a self-hosted system, so it's only going to be for people who really want to do that. Um, eventually, we're hoping to make that self-hosted system um, uh, federated so that my application server, your application server, anybody else's application server through a process called ActivityPub can exchange things like compute nodes, um, applications, layers, and data sets all across the internet. And so we're in alpha stage right now. You can check us out at app.medicalapp to start building applications and sharing them and playing around with them. This is the first time we've been sharing that application now. And um, you can read more about it at medicalapp.app. Uh, and all of our code is, of course, open source on GitHub. So if you want to contribute, feel free to reach out to us there. Thanks.